Um, I'm going to actually have Liz open up in prayer for us. I'm just um, going to have this song play for a minute. Amen. And then after the song play, I'm going to have Sister Liz to open us up in prayer. Amen. Let me cut all my devices down because there you are. Going on. <laughs> sharing i'm sorry giving a few minutes for some people to jump in amen amen he deserves all the glory amen amen hallelujah amen thank you Lord. Amen. Father, Lord, thank you for this beautiful Tuesday night. Thank you for the cooler temperatures. Thank you for this class on tonight. Thank you that is reminding that you are processing us to be the better spouse and processing the ones that are wanting to get married, that you're giving us the perfect spouse and that you are always in control of our marriage to put you first because you are the head of our lives, Lord God. And I'm, we're praying, I'm praying for the spouses and the continue the marriages, Lord God, that when the road gets hard for us, that we continue to look towards you and give us strength and wisdom. And then when things are going good, you can help us and 
rejoice in you because we're all in this together. And Lord God, I'm praying for Apostle McCord and that you would open up her ears and just continue to teach us tonight, Lord God. Remove any anxiety, Lord God, that she has tonight, Lord God. And I'm praying for an amazing class tonight, Lord God, that you would have your way and that you would just give us strength and wisdom and knowledge, Lord God, that so we can reach other people to get married and when they're married to reach out to them that to keep going keep pushing keep seeking your faith lord god and keep continuing to evangelize to get on this line tonight lord god and i'm praying for the ones that are getting on that or could not get on that i'm praying that special blessing over their lives lord god i'm praying that you would not allow any of the tricks of the enemy to come onto this line and distract us lord god and that there'll be no issues with the line tonight lord god and I'm praying for the Facebook viewers that they would continue to, to be faithful and, and not just be an observer, get in and ask questions, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, good evening. Good evening to you all. Welcome. We welcome you all on this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God for this class on tonight. And this is for not just for married couples and individual that's married. And, and when I mean individual, say, for instance, that your spouse is not available to be on the line as, of course, we're one. So we're standing in the gap uh, as well. And in and also with that being said, if you desire to be married, this is a place that you definitely want to be. I mean, if I think I have learned as much as I have doing out what this, I think we've been doing this for about, I want to say about a good five months because we talked about Marriage Covenant was one of our first book with Derek Prince. And then we got a chance to uh, get into another book with uh, my mentor wrote Apostle Ivy Hawkins on deliverance from marriage breaking spirits. And then this book. So I don't I don't remember if we had we on our fourth book or on our third book. But anyway, I'm gonna say that it is uh very good meat, very, very good meat. Um uh, great um we're getting good wisdom, getting good um good good food, okay? And so tonight, if you guys uh it's not too late to order your book, some uh one of my uh sisters in Christ just told me that, oh, thank you. We did the imperfect man. We sure did. Um, that was, I forgot about that. Um, I forgot the title of it. It's around here somewhere. But yeah, um, matter of fact, one of my, um, my mentees actually came and got that book. But this book is, I'm going to need this for my okay. This one is, Are You Really His Good Thing by Kara Williams and Crystal Appleby. And so um, this is definitely a good book, a good read, uh, an easy read as well. Uh, so we will probably be done with this within four weeks, five weeks at the top, I say, if I extend it an extra week because I want to be able to uh, talk about what you guys uh, gathered and grabbed and, and and as as well learn from each uh uh books that we read uh, we want to kind of elaborate on it a little bit so we actually you know going to be talking about uh tonight um i think the video that we uh sent out to them for they do homework every week in the videos or just something to kind of add a little bit more and to give you a little bit more clarity on what you you're, you're about to dive in and give them a little bit more understanding. So you're getting three points, you're getting two uh, opinions, but they all come into one centralized uh, location. And that's the, the, the biblical foundation, what uh, marriage was established and built on. Amen. So we're going to talk about the video that was for homework is when God makes a spouse for you, when God makes a spouse for you. And it was by, um, I think it was by wisdom the, the uh person was it was uh by wisdom so if liz if you got a chance which i know you always do your homework so faithfully uh completing it uh if you don't mind sharing what you understood from that video and what you gather from it please share with the peers if you would be so kind go ahead precious oh, it was a good video very thought provoking it was a lot but very informed i did learn a lot 
And he, she started out with Genesis 2, 18 to 23, Genesis 2, 18 to 23, about being the helpmate. It's not, like, and that's passage where it says it's not good to be a command to be alone and that Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, and that how we're supposed to leave our father and mother, be fruitful and multiply. And that how there is a process that begins to implement in our lives when God wants to begin something new. And that there is always a process, a process going on. And that God has thoughts towards you and God doesn't change. We do. And that is not good for us to be alone. And that God has given the Holy Spirit to us. So we are never really alone. And that we are privileged in this covenant that we can begin to tap into the heart of God through prayer, the word of God, and seeking his face and that you beauty did not create the marriage and that it should be dependent on God and that God is going to help you retain the good marriage not your beauty not your work not nothing the Holy Spirit will and that marriage is to be holy and that going God is going to be on and that God is going to give you wisdom on how to change things and that we need to wait on God I continually on God and that God makes people suitable for us don't rush it and that marriage is not a game that marriage is to amplify and to bring a picture of what the church is glory and beauty of the relationship with God and he also wants us to bring reveal things to us and but sometimes we can't because our eyes are blinded and that we have are we listening to the voice of God or are we listening to the voice of the flesh and that we have to bow down before God before God humbly ask him for provision wisdom and understanding and that the lord god knows everything and then whom nothing is hidden and allow god to enter that space for us and allow god to create that spouse for you be established it is the process of becoming the person that god wants us to be it's an ever ever evolving process and that god is doing something in the background and allow god to do what he does best and allow god to do it and allow god to have a place in your life in that process of making the spouse. It's a wait process and a developing process. And then the process that is taking place through you and being transformed and being made in the image of God and doing a new thing. And don't think so highly of yourself. You are still processing. And that we have to see others through it and see others through the sight of God. And then she and then he she talked about Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And, and then God will show you through God will see you through and that God created all people. And why do you look down on which the things that God created for you? Don't look down on the things you, you went through and that God is going to change the story of the pain and that God is able to change the story and that God is the God of all ages and that the eyes are limitless and that just and discern what God sees. And he's teaching us how to be obedient, being transformed, being trained. And we have to know the voice of the Lord. We have to serve to belong and and you have the stamina and that are willing to be humble and are willing to lay our lives before ourselves and allow God to train you and that God is putting you through through the process and that we cannot give up and we have to go through the process and that we cannot afford to be, to be mediocre, no rushing and that God will work in us, stay focused Time to be sharpened and a time to print. And then God is bringing you to pass the test. And that God is brave before you and you need to pass the test. Don't give in. And it's always God timing. And God delights in knowing the secrets of your heart. Communicate with him what's going on. And God wants to know everything in your heart. And don't be ashamed to tell God. He created us. He created our DNA. And that how he wants to speak into our lives. And that God is always with us and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And our spouse will fit us perfectly. Things will flow. Things will challenge. And things, and, but he is with us. And allow the word of God to bring, about, to bring about things in your life. Give God that opportunity. Let God take the driver's seat in every area. Then she, then she also said Matthew 2, Matthew 2, and that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And give God the opportunity. God sees better than we do. And God takes our spouse for us. Evolve and grow and begin to immerse yourself in the word of God and that who we are in Christ. And there's going like when you're with your spouse, there's going to be with 
you have to go with the flow and there's going to be a flow. And there's a flowing that takes place when you're with one, with God, the person that God created you to be. And that the enemy will fight you, of course, but we can continue. And that the word of God gives victory. There will be no doubt when we're the person that walks in your life. There'll be no doubt. There'll be no hesitation. Now that's the perfect kid that God created for you. And that Satan will fight you. He wants to engage in different kind of relationships. And don't allow an enemy to get to you. And that look upon like fornication because there's a destiny in your life. People will propel you into your calling. And don't allow that bitter undermine of your marriage. Don't let bitter people get into your marriage. Marriage is very important in the eyes of God. And the, the, the blood business is a kingdom business. And that God is saying that he is making a perfect student, complementary, and adapted person. And allow God to design the spouse for you and that we have to understand the process. Tap into the desires of God. Tap into the mindset of God. And the word of God, tap into those secrets. And there's the peace of God. And God is designing you the perfect spouse for us. We do not need to rush. It's all in his timing. And don't allow others to change my race. And that it's our race, not theirs. And pray according to the word. And God is doing something in secret. And we need to chill. Take a step back and be still. And sometimes we just need to be quiet and allow God to do what God does best. And that knowing God is doing something just in the, like, then she gave the example of the bamboo tree. And that pruning and plucking is involved. And that God can help us understand and that he will let us have victory. And those are my notes and what I got. It was really good. Amen. Okay. Wow. Okay. Alice, I'm really proud of you. That I mean, you took some very good notes, very informed uh, information. Uh, I mean, he was very on point with uh, with the, the video. And I mean, and it's all going to correspond to what we're going to be talking about on tonight. So if you know what time it is, it's that time to get your notebook and your ink pens ready, because we're now going to go ahead and dive into the notes that I'm giving you a bonus here, uh, just to talk a little bit more about uh, what is and this is um the topic what is god's design and calling for you woman of god or what 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 is god designing you and calling you for as a wife okay uh and and we're, we're actually starting with the re reason why and that's that's why we're going into the lesson where it says what is god uh a God is is really create God created him, okay, for him, created for him, uh, help me, created someone suitable for him, okay? So we'll talk about that as we get into the book, but as you get your notes out, uh, in, in pen, ink pen ready, we're going to go ahead and go into our notes. So I'm coming out of Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 through 24, Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 through 24. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman for she was taken out of the man. That is why a man leaves his father and a mother and his and unites it to united to his wife and they become one flesh. Amen. And know that um, knowing that Amen. This is a uh, right for a man to. It means to leave their household, to leave their parents when it is all it, when it when he is able, so that he can what become uh, and began to uh, began to what build a life of his own and cultivating his relationship with God and learning to begin to fulfill his God giving purpose in life. Amen. So today, the wife role, we're going to talk about that within the family is a much debate issue with many contra uh, contrary uh, uh, views and uh, opinions. See, one view declares that with being a wife in the tradition and the biblical sense degrades a woman in, to an inferior uh, position while other others will believe that a wife role is equal to her husband in every way see a position of great worth and value who is right what should the role of a wife be and how can she 
uh, uh, practically fulfill this role? Well, have you ever wondered what God designed is for you in your marriage and how God wants you to fulfill your calling in a manner that will please him? Did y'all catch that? What will please him? Okay. See, these are some questions that you need to think about that may, and a lot of us, it, we must be able to answer this, especially if we say that we are a Christian woman, or if, or even if, if, if you are understand and fulfill the essence roles within the marriage. See, therefore, let's look at what the Bible declares about these issues and see what God has called you to be. All right, number one is to be a helper is number one is to be a helper well the very thing that the bible teaches concerning the role of a wife is that she is to be her husband's helper see after god created adam he he said in genesis chapter 2 verse 18 genesis chapter 2 verse 18 it says it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Amen. This word helper means that uh, one who is sent to support and aid another. I'm going to say again, defining the word helper means to what? To Who is sent to support and what I and what to aid another. See, it is important to note that if uh, if God said you are to be a helper, then it stands to reason that your husband needs help. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna repeat that just in case you fell asleep on me in the class today, tonight, y'all. What did I just say? I said just in case you didn't understand what a helper is, I'm glad you asked, 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 asked. A helper will stand to the reason that your husband needs help, okay? From the beginning, God knew that man alone was incomplete in his ability to parent and raise a family. He needed the help of another to reproduce and ultimately fulfill all of the responsibilities within the family. See, women, woman was created to be his perfect helper, to fulfill a special design that only she could accomplish. See, God created a woman with a unique emotional intelligence, uh, physical abilities, and to enable her to fulfill her husband's needs for help. And I'm just going to help y'all on tonight because I want to repeat that one more time just in case you somebody told you something different, okay? But I'm just telling you what your heavenly father said and what the purpose of him creating you, woman, okay? He said that you... He already know that you was unique, okay? And he already he, he, he already equipped you because he knew that you was gonna be emotional and all know and also know that you was gonna be intelligent and, and also what you was gonna be a physical ability to enable her to fulfill her husband's needs for him. Okay, so amen. So but 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 does the this role as your husband's helper means that you are inferior to him? Does this role as a helper impl implies a second class position in the marriage relationship? Not at all. See, the scripture reveals that God is our helper and he sent another helper. Mm -hmm. And this person of the Holy Spirit is to abide with us forever. Amen. Psalms 
54 verse 4. Psalms 54 verse 4 says, surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. Amen. And then John 14 and 6, John 14 and 16, I'm sorry. It says, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Amen. See, obviously God not inferior, meaning second class, to, to, to the man simply because he wants to help us. Therefore, neither should you consider your position as a helper to degrading to your person in an, any way. See, on the contrary, you should see your role as one who has come aside of your husband to work with him to meet the needs of your family. So therefore your marriage should be viewed as if you were practice, I mean, participating in a team sport, okay? So that means y'all have to work together, right? Not against each other. In order to win the game and come together as a team uh, player, you gotta work together. Amen. In order to win. Amen. So you must always remember that to be a part of a winning team, you, you, you need the help of every player. Come on, participating or the entire team. OK, if not, you will fail. See, this is also what makes a winning marriage. When I said every player i'm talking about god the father jesus and the holy spirit you need all of them to help you succeed and to win as a team player so you should also notice that father declared that the woman will be comparable to a man See, God didn't create Eve better than Adam, nor did he make her to be inferior to him. But one comparable was, and it was to allow to be equal to him. See, the word comparable means that one who is a counterpart or the other side of a match, match part, part, pair. See, therefore the woman was created to be the perfect complimenting to her husband. Yes, I did say compliment. Yes, I did. Like two matching gloves. See, one, the counterpart of the other. See, to fulfill God's uh, design for you as a wife, woman of God, will, entitle, will entail, I'm sorry, understand where and how you can become a compliment to your husband. To determine this, you must find out where your husband needs help. Come on now. It don't take a blind man to, to figure to see this or figure it out. All right. So support or your team effort. Okay. You must be determined, guys, to help, support or your team effort, okay? So finding this need and meeting it is a fundamental to experiencing the satisfaction God intended for you as a wife. See, this need will mostly likely change from day to day, but God wants to give you eyes to see the need and a heart to fulfill it. Amen. So does your husband need your, your spiritual encouragement because of some personal struggles that he occurs occurring at the time in his life? Or could he use your counseling over a difficult this decision that he is about to make regarding his job or business? See, is your husband in a need of help with organization, organ, organization at home? Or you are the best one to help him with his need because you know him better than anyone else, which enables you to be his greatest helper. Remember Solomon said in, uh, in um, 
in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine through 10, Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine through 10. He said, two are better than one. Woe to him who is alone. I remember when my husband always lose something, he will always ask me, come to me, honey, do you see my glasses? Honey, you see my keys? Do you, honey, you see my green, I'm using just a green toolbox. So, you know, and it's like, always, for some reason, I end up finding it. But this is what I do. I ask the Holy Spirit, retract where he placed these lost, lost items because nothing is lost in Christ. And I end up finding it each and every time. And he will always make a joke. See, that's why I married you because you, you a good finder. <laughs> you a good finder. You always find, tends to find everything that I misplaced. Amen. Amen. So next, number two, be a virtuous wife. Be a virtuous wife. And the scripture asks the question, Proverbs 31 and 10, Proverbs 31, verse 10, who can find a virtuous wife? Then declares, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. See, the word virtuous means that one who possess strength and substance. I'm going to repeat that so you guys can understand. Y'all need to be applying this to, your, to, to, to your, your uh, knowing that this is what you need to be applying to you as the wife, okay? Who you supposed to be, you, so you know your identity and what you, what's your position, what you holding, okay? What you capable of, what you, girl, you don't know what's in your hands sometimes, okay? But again, the the definition for the, the virtuous uh, means what? One who possess strength and substance. Down, girl. That's why I used to always tell my women to God, are you the thermostat or the temperature gauge? You better say I'm the thermostat because I set the tone in my home. And I always tell them, I said, are you the neck or the head? Now, you know your husband's supposed to be the head and you the neck that make the head turn. Catch that, guys. In the, did y'all catch that? Watch <laughs> now. Amen. Ah, oh, so no, you better be the neck that makes the head turn, to help the head turn. All right. Amen. I said to help to make the head turn, not to make, because make sound like a control thing going. So that's why I said help the neck turn. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So as you read the rest of Proverbs 31, you will learn that the characteristic that makes her a woman of strength and substance and how these actions greatly affects her marriage. See, notice that King Lemu uh, Le, Le, Le acknowledged that her worth is far above rubies. See, the word worth literally uh, means that if you had to play for this kind of service, it will be incredibly expensive. Mm, you hear that? What word worth mean? Pay what? For this kind of service, it will be incredibly expensive. See, far above the cost of rubies, the scripture therefore reveals that a virtuous wife is far from an inferior position in a marriage. So you are worth, ladies, more then his paycheck could sustain. Amen. Amen. See, the strength of a virtuous wife is revealed in her character as well as in the service that she is rendered towards others. She is very uh, competent and industrious in the affairs of her home and so that her husband may safely trust her decisions. See, her action shows godly wisdom. Amen. And true kindness marks all the choices she makes. See, this ultimately gains her the praise of her husband and children. See, this is the kind of wife God is calling you to be, ladies. 
So, but what, what creates this character is strength and virtue in your life. See, the answer is found at the end of this chapter when he was talking about King Lemu. Le stated that in Proverbs 31, verse 30, Proverbs 31 and 30, it said, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall praise, she shall be praised, amen? So here is where the strength of character comes from, her personal reverence and fear of God, amen? Did you catch that, ladies? that your personal reverence comes by fear of God, fear of God. So when you mess up and do something, you fear God and you apologize and immediately you ask for forgiveness. Because why? Because you have the Holy Spirit that's gonna convict you and correct you immediately. And you fear messing up with your father. OK, it's just like when you mess up as a kid and you know that you went home from school and you your teacher and already your principal already called and told your mom or your father that you done played hooky. You already know you about to get a good beat down. OK, spanking. I, I'll make it real nice. Spanking or time it, which I, I, don't, I ain't never had no time out. So I don't even know what that is in our house. So we used to have to go outside and get the switch. And I would go get a little switch. And my mom said, now go back out there and get the biggest switch. You trying to be funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, y'all know that. Y'all, y'all, y'all remember that? Or go get a belt. Who gonna go get a belt? And go and, and go get your daddy's belt. No, I'm gonna get my my baby sister's belt. <laughs> amen all right so all right so what was that so the fear of god is necessary and it's the attitude re required for a for any wife to have the strength of character that when in would will enable her to lead a life pleasing to god amen so the fear of the lord is what motivate us to hate evil Catch that guy and a perfect holiness. I'm going to repeat that so you guys can digest on that just for a second. Marinate on this one. The fear of the Lord is what, what motivates us to hate evil. Don't you know evil stinks in God's eyesight? And so when you fear God, you will, you will dislike stuff that you see that's going on. You will, you will, you will hate to see sin, evil, okay, and per, and, and, but in this personal, or I'm sorry, holding, I say perfect holiness in our perfect life, so in Proverbs 8, verse 13, Proverbs 8, verse 13 says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil, I hate pride and arrogancy, evil behind, uh, evil behavior, I'm sorry, and perverse it, perverted speech. So you did, did y'all understand that? He said that when you fear the Lord, you will hate basically what he hates. He hates evil. He hates pride. And we know what pride is. Pride is that arrogant, that uh, stiff neck, hard hardened, stu a stubborn little imp. You know, that's what pride is, selfish, self-centered, okay? Leviathan, absolutely. You'll find it in Job 41, Job 41, where you talk about Leviathan putting a hook in his nostril and a cord around his tongue. Is it Job? Yes, yeah, one of them. Thank you. Uh-huh. So anyway, it's Job 41, praise God. So next, it, it also an arrogancy. So you know, when a person is real arrogant, they always sarcastic and they always you know, just can't never say nothing nice without being sarcastic or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or even, e and then it said evil behavior. You know, somebody just uh, just do stuff, just, just being evil for no reason at all, just being mean, mean for no reason and doing stuff that just to hurt you and say the talk uh, and even speak when I say talk or even say hatred things, okay? That's an evil 
behavior. When you don't have a conscious or uh, God fear of what comes out of your mouth. Boy, I can't stand you. I hate you. I wish you was dead. That's an evil behavior. I just gave you a, a, an example. Oh, why did you marry the innovation? I don't know why I married. I don't know. I was just married because I just was, I was, I don't know what no whole lot of men on the uh, street. So I just married anything that came along. I'm just using an example, you know, just the evil behavior. But you know what I'm talking about, evil behavior, just doing stuff that you know that God is not pleased with. Okay. So that's what evil behavior, doing stuff, uh, wilding out, drinking, drugging, sleeping with Sally Sue and everybody. I'm just using that as an example. So giving you an example with evil behavior, lying, uh, manipulating, conning people out of money, conning people to get what you want. That's evil behavior. So I'm just trying to help somebody in case y'all don't understand. Not no ho ho Merry Christmas. Yeah, the, I'll always say yeah. Uh, 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 out there just wilding out. Okay. And then that perverted speak just talking trash, just talking with a tra nasty mouth, just, you know, so a per perverted speech or what is it, perversion speech, uh-huh. And perverted speech can also be like twist, twisting words, you know, too, like, you know, just, just like, you know, that's another way of lying, you know, just Lying to make some sound, you're lying to the point that you're making it, the story big and making it sound real interesting. So you perverted speech, okay? Twisting the truth to, to, to make you look good, okay? Or however. All right, let me move on. So Second Chronicles, I mean, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have these promises, Dear friend, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit. Perfect, perfect, perfecting, I'm sorry, holiness out of the reverence uh, for God. Amen. So guess what? Holiness is still mandatory. Yeah, no, nah, it's not overrated. Holiness is still mandatory. Okay. We just, we didn't just took holiness out of a lot of stuff, out of our household, out of our jobs, out of our, I ain't going to say churches, but when you got a lot of stuff coming in the church, you got, you got the Eastern stars, Freemasons in the church. You got sororities, fraternities, you got witchcraft going, you got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. All right. So that's a whole different lesson. Let me stay, stay on, stay on target here. So. Do you want to become a virtuous wife? I'm glad you asked. If you do, then you must surrender. What's surrender? Hands up. I surrender my all, my emotion, my will, and my mind daily. I got to surrender. Not my will, but his will be done in my marriage. All right? My ways are not... Look, it ain't always Frankie's ways. Is God's ways, okay? I can't always get my way, okay? I can't throw a tampering because uh, Mr. McCoy not doing what I asked him to do, take out the trash or put the toilet seat down. I can't get upset about that. I can, I can ask and suggest, honey, would you please put the toilet seat down just in case I go in there at nighttime, half sleep and end up falling down the Mississippi River, okay? All right, so uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so saying this, um, so as I said, you must surrender your life to Christ and ask him to fill you with this respectful attitude towards the father. Did you get that, ladies? Surrender your life to Christ. Okay, number one, surrender your, your life to Christ. See, surrender is like I always tell them, you, you it's like a car, right? You got the steering wheel and you oh, oh, driving and hitting everything and running over folks and everything. But when you give God the whole car, oh, that's a whole different story. That means I'm 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 get, I'm surrendering the whole car to him. Okay? Because I done jacked some folks up. Okay, I done ran some folks off the road. Okay. So as you surrender um your life, your life to Christ, and then you ask him to fill you with this respectful attitude did you hear that check your attitude ladies check 
your attitude at the door. So you a respectful attitude, not a disrespectful attitude, not got to have a last say so word, you know, got to not get, don't have to always be in control. But the respectful attitude towards the father. Amen. So ask God for a hatred for that evil or sinful habit that is captives that captures you at this moment. See, so began to pursue God by seeking him daily. I'm going to repeat that. Began by pursuing God by what? Seeking him once a month, once a year, once a week? No, I said daily. Why? Because this flesh it, it, it got to die daily, okay? It, 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 that mind got to be removed, renewed daily as well, okay? Because we could jack some stuff up. You already know, them stinking thinking, as I call it, stinking thinking. All right, so, um, and also begin to petition him for true holiness of your heart of your heart what i say begin to petition him for the true holiness of heart okay as you do the strength of character and virtue virtual means, virtual means righteousness you desire your desire will naturally begin to change your life yes it will it will change your marriage as well Next one, be Purdue wife, which is wise. Be a Purdue wife. Solomon uh, declared that Proverbs 19 and 14, Proverbs 19, verse 14 said, houses and riches are inheritance from, from fathers, but a, a prudent wife is from the Lord. So what does it mean to be a prudent wife? The word prudent means one who is wise and understanding. Wise and understanding. Are you a, are you a wise woman or not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, father, fathers gives the gifts of inheritance and material wealth. But when God desires to give a gift of real worth, he gives a wise, a wise and understanding wife. Amen. So notice again that a wife is betrayal, uh, betrayed. I'm sorry, in the scripture, for from being worthless. But compared to the greatest inheritance that could be given by man, see. Also, it is interesting that God commands husband to dwell with their spouses. And that was in first Peter. Let's go to first Peter three, verse seven. First Peter chapter three, verse seven says, with understanding, get honor to the wife as to the leader. See, but notice in this previous passage in Proverbs that you are required to be uh, understanding to. Amen. So these two verses balance each other out, uh, uh, each other out and other. And uh, and encourage both spouses to give one of the most essence qualities for a good marriage understanding. Amen. See, therefore, if God wants you to understand your husband, how do you gain the insight? So often, men express to me that their wives don't understand them. See, how about you? Do you understand your husband needs? his weakness, his strengths. This understanding is what will enable you to be a strong and effective helper and the counterpart your husband needs. See, what are some of the possible needs your husband might have and how would you determine them? The best way to find out what this need, need might be is to simply ask him, why not ask him? Where can I better meet you, your needs? Come on, I'm gonna repeat that. Where can I better meet 
your need? Where do I need a greater understanding of you and the pressure you face? So when you ask these kinds of questions, you are immediately bridging the gap between the real difference that exists between you and your spouse. See, men and women are different, right? And um, especially in their makeup, makeup. So you are physical and hormonally, hormonally different. Hormones, y'all know y'all hormones be kicking on 10 all the time, sometimes, all the time, sometimes. See, you communicate differently. You have a distance social and a sexual needs. And you and, and both and both express love very differently. With all these uh, uh, differences, you need a lot of understanding of the man you married. See, as you gain this understanding of him, you will naturally be brought closer to one another. So if you reverse the process and insist on your way all the time, you only make the difference more apparent. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, apparent. So uh, widening widen the gap between you. So therefore, seek a, uh, to understand your husband and what his real needs are being willing to get to the meet these needs. This is a good design for your marriage. This is God's design for your marriage, amen? Number four, be a submissive wife. Be a submissive wife. I know some of you, as you read the word submission, you are becoming very unease. If the ideal of submission rubs you the wrong way, I want to encourage you to take another look at the definition according to the scripture. See, submission should never be considered a word that de denotes uh, inferiority of a, a position that is worthless to you. So if this is your belief, let me assure that your understanding of this issue is not a biblical one. See, submission is something that we have to learn in every aspect of our life. You must learn to submit to the law of the country, of this land, okay? Whether they are traffic laws or crime uh, or, or, or criminal codes, I'm sorry. So if you work outside the home, you must submit to your employee and, it, and his or her request. So when you want to, went to school, you had to what? Learn to submit to a teacher when an assignment was given. So when you go to the doctor with the illness, you must what? Choose whether or not you will submit to the, the uh, pharmacist diagnosis, the, the doctor's diagnosis, right? Diagnosis and treatment. See, when you must render submission in the areas of life, you don't consider it disgrading uh, to you as a person, you would never think that your employer or your doctor was better than you or that you were inferior to them. See, in these circumstances, you would, re would, you would reason that your submission is a simple necessity for the hormones in the workplace or necessary for you to gain your help. See, the same uh, is the truth for your marriage. See, true biblical uh, submission in the home will bring harmony and health. I'm going to repeat that, ladies. That what? True biblical submission in the home will what? Bring harmony and health to your marriage. Amen? See, I believe the reason why this ideal of submission is so hateful to many whites is because the concept has been taken out of content, biblical wise, and that this has resulted in many abuse. See, therefore, let us go back to the scripture and consider first what submission does not mean. Submission does not mean that you are second class Christian or inferior to your husband in any way. Everywhere, scriptures affirms the total 
equality uh equal of a woman with a man see paul said in galatians 3 verse 28 galatians chapter 3 verse 28 he said there is neither jew nor greek there is neither slave nor free there is neither male nor female for you are all one in christ jesus Woo, amen see for that for the apostle to make this decoration in the first century was a totally revolutional statement because the woman in those days were considered a um personal property of their husband and the apostle peter even agreed that wives were equal to their husband declaring them to be first peter three and seven first peter three verse seven herod's Harris together of the grace of life. Okay, so in the light of this, these verses uh, uh, um, accusing the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, cussing to, I mean, the, the apostles. I'm sorry, of the male is a simp. It was simply at that point seen to be ridiculous, right? But there is no second class citizenship in the kingdom of God. Did you catch that? There is no second citizenship in the kingdom of God and neither is a wife inferior to her husband I know I might be stepping on some toes when we got some people that's stuck in religion and tradition yeah yeah we because they they can they turn that whole thing that in that case wife's got to be uh women's got to be silenced and and the women sit on this side of the church and the men sit on that side no me and my husband we sit together we 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 lead together we come together amen hallelujah now only way you separate unless he's up there in the pulpit and him, a lot of time he will ask if it's if it's okay if my wife will uh, escort me or be by my side okay in addition submission does not mean that you must be your husband's personal slave so you can't be equal heirs with your husband and be a slave at the same time yes the scripture does teach that all christians are to be uh to to uh by love and serve one another and in galatians chapter 5 verse 13 galatians chapter 5 verse 13 so but that we just talked about that so but notice that the passage says uh to serve one another amen and a truly biblical marriage is revealed when when both husband and wife is willing to serve each other without being commanded or forced did y'all get that gentlemen men of god love doesn't force but willingly it gives see jesus didn't call the disciples slaves he called them friends john 15 john 15 and 15 says and this is the relationship that you should have with your spouse friends don't command or force one another to give unquestions unquestioned uh spouses See, friends don't command or force one another to give, um, I, I'm sorry, there is always, I'm sorry, limits to your submission. See, Paul taught wives to submit only as fitting in the Lord. And that was Col uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. It is not fitting for your husband to command you as his servant in an unloving way, nor should you ever submit to a request by your husband to sin or violate god's word in these cases you ought to obey god rather than man and acts 5 verse 29 talks about that acts 5 verse 29 due to the time i'm trying to go through this because i'm reached my seven o'clock point time see now let's look at what submission does mean okay we say submission is first as to of what love respect and gentleness repeat submission is what i want y'all get this in y'all get this in y'all spirit submission is love respect and gentleness and the way you speak and act towards your husband see you should all also expect to receive this attitude of love and respect for him notice paul finally did encourage 
uh, finally encourage men to, and to, to husbands and wives in Ephesians chapter uh, five. He encouraged both partners to loving submission when he said, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see the see that she respect her husband. And that was in verse 43, in verse 43, I'm sorry, Ephesians 5, verse 33, okay? So when you demonstrate love, respect towards your spouse in this manner, you comprehend the essence of what submission is all about. And I'm not gonna hit you guys too much with the submission because it's, it's a little long um, in my notes. But number next one is be companion. Be a companion, okay? Do you know that companionship is the ultimate goal of your marriage relationship? When God created Eve, it was, a, it was to solve the problem of Adam's aloneness by bringing him a companion for life. But the real question is this, how can you experience and grow in companionship with your husband? See, companionship is the result of doing all that I have discussed uh, in, this, in this whole lesson, okay? See, companionship is um, when, you are, when you are helpful, you become submissive, you live in an unselfish manner, pursue understanding and, and purpose to be friendly. So companionship will be the natural result, amen? So think about it. Would you want to be a companion to someone who was critical, selfish, rebellion, and headstrong? Really, companion could never occur in this kind of relationship. However, God has called you to be a very different kind of person with a different attitude. You must become your husband's friend and companion. This is how the prophet Malachi referred to the whites when he reproved the men of Israel for the lack of caring for their spouses. He wanted the men, and, the, and, and what did he say? I think it was Malachi, Malachi 2 and 14, Malachi of uh, chapter 2 verse 14 he said the lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have dealt tre uh, treacherously yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant so you already know the whole story they end up divorcing their youth wives for pagan wives ah oh, that's a whole different story you don't you don't left a blessed marriage for a pagan marriage. Uh, I just threw pagan. Well, you already know, that was, that, that's what they did. So with that, we gotta know that companionship is the most fundamental purpose and goal of your marriage relationship. And it should therefore be the highest priority of your time together each day. See, God has called you to be a spiritual, emotional, intelligence, uh, a, a social and sexual companionship to your husband. In each of these areas, God wanted you to seek specific ways to develop companionship, I mean, helpfulness and understanding and giving. As you love your husband in this manner, you will naturally notice a deepening of your one flesh relationship together. So this is also where the joy and satisfaction of your relationship will be found. Simply because you are fulfilling God's design and calling for you as a wife. So in the companionship, that's the priority of your daily life with your husbands, or are you seeking daily to find ways to become a better friend or to simply easily uh, to seek the companionship of a girlfriend or even another male uh, friend? See, both are dangerous and destructive to your, to your marital relationship. So your husband must take priority among all of your friends and acquaintance. When you, keep, when you keep him in this position, then the opportunity exists for you to build the companionship you are looking for. So where is your husband asking for your companion and you're willing to at least attend, attempt to meet this need? 
So if you are unwilling to meet these needs, ladies, he has expressed, you are in fact declaring to him your lack of desire for his companionship with him. So, but you may be thinking he doesn't respond to my request for companionship. Why should I seek to meet his needs? Jesus answered this very common question when he said to his disciples um, in, in chapter Matthew's, I'm sorry, no, Matthew 7, verse 12. I'm almost done, y'all. Matthew 7, verse 12 says, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law. Come on, and the prophets. See, in this passage, Jesus explained that if you want others to love and give to you, you must first give this love to them. See, Christ completely lived by this principle himself. So what he wants from mankind, and he first gave, he wanted men to love him, so he first loved them. He wanted us to lay our lives down, so he first laid his down. See, this kind of love is what attracts us to him and ultimately makes us his companion and friend. Wouldn't you take a similar step tonight and to become your husband's companion? Ladies, I promise you won't regret it. All right, that ends the lesson for tonight. And the title was, What is God Design and Calling for Your Life, for Your Marriage, Woman of God? Amen? All right, that ends the lesson. So we're going to get ready to get in our book and read uh, we, uh, first chapter. We're on page five, page five. And so if uh, Liz is ready to go ahead, let's go ahead and get this party rolling. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mine starts out with Proverbs 18.2. Mine's the Kindle version. Is that right? Okay. Proverbs 18.22. He who finds a true wife is a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Before I start my day, every morning I spend time with along with God in prayer and reading a few scriptures. On the morning of January 1st, 2013, I came across a, a scripture referred above. I always read that scripture with assumption that a man who found a wife had apparently found a good thing. So I asked myself a question, am I really a good thing? I was steered to dig deeper in the meaning of good. During the study, tears began to roll down my face because the answer to my question was clear. I was not operating in the characterization of being good. How could I not be a good thing when the Bible plainly says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing? I'm ecstatic to share with you some of the things I've learned during my study and to share God's word and what it has to say about being a good wife. One of the definitions for good is having the qualities required for a particular role. Another one is a benefit or advantage to someone or something. So ask yourself, do I have the qualities required for my role as a wife? Am I a benefit or an advantage to your husband? And being an advantage to someone means that you put them in a favorable or in a more favorable position. The complete scripture reads, he who findeth a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are you truly operating in your role as a wife? causing your husband to be placed in a favorable position? In order for us to exemplify being a good thing, we must be a benefit or an advantage to our husband. What I realized was that in order for me to be a benefit or an advantage, I had to first renew my mind. I was drawing off old information. Our minds store up memories and some things can constitute impair or impairment to our victory. Mind transformation happens on the inside. Change is not thinking the whole not the whole resolution. We have to go through the neural. We are all raised a certain way, exposed to certain environment, certain teaching, which invariably impacts the way we think. When transferring from our way of thinking to God's way, it's very challenging, and we must be open and receptive to God's word so that he can revamp our minds. I was stuck in my ways. 
stuck in my mindset and stuck in the way I was doing things. Change is hard, and when we seek it, we will certainly need the help of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can't get there alone for apart from him. We can do nothing. We grow by going to a non-compromising Bible teaching church, spending time in God's word, adapting to his way of doing things. Doing things God's way always places us in favorable position. Now the Genesis 2, 18. Then now the Lord God said, it is not good, sufficient, satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper, suitable, adapted, complementary for him. In order to operate passionately in God's will, we must know and understand what scripture and certain words within the scripture actually mean. Let's look at the word helper. It means a person that gives assistance, support, etc. Once we have been chosen by our husband, yep, that's right, you were chosen. Our job is to now be of assistance and support to him. We should not come into his life to be a dominant, know-it-all kind of person. That is completely against God's will. I'll use myself as an example. Before my husband and I got married and I had been operating in his own lawn care company for seven years, he was doing it all by the, doing it all, the mowing, the estimating, the building, the scheduling, etc. To him, he had a very successful company and was doing just fine. Then I came along with my extensive background in assisting executives. I thought I could just make changes immediately. I typed up letters and sent them out to all customers, explaining new procedures. I changed the billing method and created a new scheduling sheet that would use that he would use. I was so excited that to do things, thinking that he would be so happy and grateful that those changes were going to be in effect. To me, in order to take his business to another level in professionalism, those changes could be made immediately for the life of me. I just couldn't understand why he was so upset. Why wasn't he jumping up and down and told us time about my decision to implement these changes? I mean, why wouldn't I take matters into my own hands? After all, I was the one with the administrative background. I did that for a living, and I am I his helpmate, right? With all my expertise in this area, the way I handled the things was completely out of order and wrong. How I went about doing things was for being of assistance, I completely took over. Did I do that intentionally? Absolutely not. I didn't think then I was taking over. I thought I was being a helpmate. And that's why I stress the importance of understanding the meaning of words in scripture. There are a couple more words in this particular verse that stand out to me. Suitable and adapted for him. Suitable means right for a particular person. Adapted means to become adjusted to new conditions. We, as women, are so used to being who we are. We have this, this who I am attitude. Either you like it or you don't. I'm not changing who I am for anyone. Well, it's for you, it's, if your overall purpose is to please God, then you are to become adjusted to new conditions. You and your husband are from two different backgrounds. You were raised one way and he was raised another. You are two completely different human beings, but the word of God tells us that we are to adapt to him. What do I mean? And you can go into your marriage and you can't go into your marriage trying to change him. Let me share a story. Before my husband and I got married, I used to laugh at the way he drove. It was a joke. And I often tell him he drove like an old man. But it was so key and funny to me. So one day after we were married, I was trailing him somewhere. He was driving so slow that it started to annoy me. Isn't that funny? The very thing that was so cute and funny before marriage was tremendously annoying to me after marriage. Watch out, that's the, one of the enemy's texts. Anyhow, I was trailing him and I said out loud, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe he is driving this slow. As I put my blinker on and looked over my shoulder, Sure, the coast was clear for me to get over because I was certainly going to pass him and make him follow me. The Holy Spirit sat my, in my tracks and said, No, you are to stay behind him and follow him, no matter how slow he goes. I heard the Holy Spirit and, and I heard him clear. Sometimes we don't allow our husbands to lead because we think they're going too slow. They're doing it wrong. I can do it better. And what I understand now is that God wants us to allow our husbands to lead and that we are to follow them even when we are not in agreement with how they're leading. We pray 
to God and trust that he will work all things for our good. Do we keep going? Okay. Before you married him, you saw the way his way of living. You knew how much money he made and saw the car he drove. He probably had to borrow twenty dollars for me to put gas in his car and all that. I'm joking, but if the shoe fits. What I'm saying is when you married him, you accept him in his way of life, nagging him about getting a better job, driving too slow, wanting a bigger house, taking fancy trips, and comparing him to some girl and her husband on Instagram, who you don't even know is not okay. If you're not comfortable with the way you guys are way you guys are living, I recommend you sit down with your husband. Talk about him, talk to him about your dreams and goals, and ask him what his are. Figure out how the both of you can work together as a team. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, stop, not yet. I accidentally pushed it. Just finish up. You're almost done. Where is okay. that? Okay. Figure out how you both can work together as a team. You can encourage, cheer for, and assist him for going after the plan. But you cannot you cannot get livid about marriage that you don't you can't get livid about a marriage that you voluntarily went into. And for the singles. Make sure you That's have it. a discussion. That's marriage. it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. So Fran, did you see where she left off at? What tell her uh Liz where you left off, what page you on? Because I think she got the ego too. Uh, yeah, mine on mine says page, on page sixteen where it says ten for singles. Make sure you have the discussion prior to marriage. Okay, page sixteen. Fran, you got your ebook. Okay. All right. Well, let me go ahead. I don't. See, I don't see her. Oh, she said I don't have my book. Okay, she don't have her book. Okay, so. All right, so the hints for the singles. All right, any single and single men in the house, single women in the house. Okay, make sure that you have this discussion prior, prior to your marriage. Understand what his plans for his future are, and make sure that you're okay with following and assisting with those plans before you make a lifelong commitment. Anyway, if I wouldn't handle things differently and ask for my husband's approval and whether he was okay with the changes or not, I wouldn't have accepted and been content with it. Just because we think it should be done this way or that way does not mean that he's going to be in agreement 100% of the time. And that is okay. See, the reason this statement can be a challenge to accept is that as a woman, we have entanglable uh, quality and that wisdom. See, if you notice in Proverbs, Samuel um, uh, portrayed wisdom as a woman in Proverbs 1, verse 20 through 33, and Proverbs 8, verse 1 through 9 and 12 said, wisdom is embodied as a woman who has much to offer including substance, sustaining, I'm sorry, sustaining wealth and prosperity and life to anyone who would adhere, and adhere to her words. See Proverbs 8, verse 18 and 35. However, Solomon as, is not saying that a woman or as essentially wiser than a man, and he is also not saying that the wisdom is a woman. See, when we women truly tap into our value, it's powerful. Wisdom is you understanding that you and your husband will not always be in agreement with every decision made. See, wisdom says that he's the one, he's the man, and he's the ultimate decision maker. So if you know in your heart of hearts that you're right about a situation and your husband refused to heed to your suggestions, pray to God about it. Ask God to move on his heart and provide him, your husband, a clearer understanding of your suggestion. If it's God's will that is done, ooh, did y'all catch that? If it's God's will 
that it's done the way you suggested, allow him to make it happen and not you. Wait, but my husband is not saved. He won't hear from God. If God talks right in his face, well, dig deeper into this, into, into this and a, a later chapter. Now, don't go skipping all the rest of the chapter to get to that one. Reading this book in its entirely will allow you to have a greater understanding and appreciation of the entire uh, aspects of being a wife. So if you if if your husband decides to not go with your suggestion, follow him anyway, as long as it's not illegal, unethic, or again express will of God, and allow God to get the the get the glory out of your obedience. As my pastor often says, it's not about who's right, but what's right. And what's right is always the word of God. In Matthew 19, verse 4 through 6, Matthew 19, verse 4 through 6, it said, that we, he replied, have you never read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined in separ inseparable to his wife and the two shall become one flesh so they are no longer two but one flesh so therefore god has joined together let no one separate see why do you realize the the, the significance the significancies of your of, of marriage in the sight of god do you understand that once you're married you're no longer two but one you are so entwined with your, your husband that God see you as one. So if you, the type of woman that bad mouths your husband before others, you are also refer, referencing your, yourself. Ugh, ugh, did y'all catch that? You bad mouthing your husband before others, vice versa, because y'all want, you are referencing the uh, what you're saying about yourself. So whatever image you put on, out to others as it relates to your husband is also the very same image of yourself. So Proverbs 31 verse 12, it says that the wife comforts, encourages, and does her husband only good and not evil all the day of her life. See, it's our responsibility as wives to make sure that we are operating in God's principle as it relates to the way we treat our husband. Did you know that even when your husband is not in your presence, the above reference scripture can still be carried out. We can bring uh, good to our husband's name when he's not around by the way we speak of him to others. See, we sometimes feel as if we need to vent and, the, and this is quite fine, but we must make sure that we're venting to the right person. It is okay to vent. The Bible even tells us that we can, but it says to vent to godly counseling, counsel. So many times we vent to the wrong person. We vent to the ones that who are going to jump on our bag wagon and agree with everything we're saying. I have to, I have to go here. But often we allow our emotions to get the best of us and find ourselves running to mama house. And that one girlfriend who's going, going through hell with her boyfriend, but is quick to give her opinion. To understand that once you got you guys make up in your makeup and you forgive the husband, you guys are now back loving dovey. See, you have now placed him in a very uncomfortable situation by exposing some personal things about him to your circle. So if you guys went through a rough season in your marriage, 
and have now rekindled things, but he's still acting as if he doesn't want to come around your circle of friends or family, it's because you destroyed his character. Your job is now to rebuild his trust. And I pray that he recognized that venting to the wrong people is very um, demean, demean, demanding, demanding, demanding in a marriage. Detrimental, detrimental, thank you. <laughs> Vice is extremely important that we have someone in our lives that can check us and help us understand when we are wrong. The yes, sweetheart, sometimes you are wrong. And if, if I may be quite frank, frankly, okay. Most of, of the time we are wrong. Wait, don't close the book. I pre-warn you that you may disagree with some things in this book if you've never been exposed to God's uncompromising truth. See, however, when you begin to accept and operate in the truth of God's word, you will begin to experience true freedom. Honestly, ladies, if you drive all the way into a biblical teachings of marriage and truly operate in our role as a wife, a huge percent of our, of our arguments will decrease. See, one of the favorite sayings is marriage is, a, is God's gift to man. And how we treat our marriage is our gift back to God. So let's be sure we're presenting our father with the gift of excellencies in our marriage. After reading this chapter, I pray that you know and understand what's being a good thing and a true helpmate really means. Accept it, it's true, and be, bet, be the best you can be. Hallelujah. Be, a, be, be the best that you can be. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're almost done. We're going to ask these questions openly and you guys are all uh, can participate. Amen. Even on Facebook, if I see you in the chat and you can answer the question, I'll be more than happy to uh, address you, your answer to the question that we're going to talk about. So we, we just completed chapter one and the topic we talked about was creating, created for him. And then the, we're going to talk about the pur purpose to action. Number one question, it says, after reading section one, can you honestly say that you have been a good thing to your husband? Anybody? Yes, no, explain. Come on if you can. Hello? Really, guys? Uh, I can use some guidance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm going to play with her. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Liz. Just unmute, baby. Okay. I think for me, sometimes I have and sometimes I haven't, just being transparent because I'm not perfect. Like, I thank God for the Holy Spirit because He'll convict me when I say something wrong or if I start nagging. Um, okay, I need to take a step back, repent and apologize. And like, okay, we have to come like some, or just realizing that we're both human, that we both make mistakes. And that just, when we do go through those rough spots, meet with godly counsel to fix those problems. And uh, just being human and just being transparent with each other and being mindful of each other's little quirks and quit pushing each other's buttons. I think I said that right. And just being open and honest with each other and not realizing, okay, when we do make mistakes, we go back and fix it. And we talk it out and communicate and don't let, and don't let the devil have an open door and just communicate and don't let the sun go down in our anger and just work through things and pray about everything too. And that's all I got. Okay. I had to laugh at, I was laughing. That was good. Uh, Brother Robinson said, I haven't been a good thing. I haven't been a good thing. Well, we know the wife is a good thing. And he, he said, because I don't even know my wife. So 
I was, that's why I was laughing at him because I'm like, he played too much. <laughs> so anyway, uh, can I uh, can I be honest? I don't know if I can be honest on on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Um, I'm I I I thought I was uh, his good thing, you know. I I I thought I was, but for some reason I fell short of God's glory. Yeah, that's a whole different story. <laughs> that Ryan, <right>, y'all. <laughs> so I, 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 I plead the fifth right now. I pass. I pass. Okay. I'll be transparent when we y'all come to safe haven, and I, and I, and I tell you, well, y'all just have to, y'all just have to get order the, 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 the second book that's in birthing position. I sec the second book. Yeah, the second book. All right. So number two. In the section two, we talk about being adapted for him. We talked about being adapted for him. Think of something in your life that you do or say that your husband companion, I mean, complaints about often. Have you really examined that thing and actually put forth sincerely effort to work on it? Or is it going in one ear and out the other? Come on, help me, ladies. Think of something in your life that you do. Go ahead, friend. Go ahead. I repeat the question again. Okay. All right. So we talked about being adapted for him, but think of something uh, in your life that you do or say that your husband complains about often. Have you really examined that thing and actually put forth sincere effort to work on it? Or is it going in one ear and out the other? Wow. <laughs> Just put me on the spot. <laughs> I think that question is a two way street because <laughs> ask the question, anime. It didn't say hubby, it said you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe that sometimes, you know, I know one issue is I'm sometimes I'm too neat. I'm too tidy. I like things, you know, put away in its right place. Um, like if, um, you know, hubby, you know, brushes his teeth and doesn't clean the counter, or if he doesn't put, you know, certain things where certain things go like our shoes um there's a certain place where our laundry goes and yeah I I need to work on that just to you know just say honey can you please put this over here and and not give him you know a sentencing and say how come you didn't do this or you know better to to, to put this away right and yeah I that's why I said I think that's a two-way street <laughs> this girl just cannot answer the anime all I'd ask for one little simple thing is answer the question think of something in your life that you do or say that your husband complains about often what do your husband complain about often with you? And then it says, have you really examined that thing and actually put forth sincere effort to work on it? Or is it going in one ear and out the other? All right. No, I haven't. No, no. It it just it just like, okay, I'll do it next time. <laughs> So basically, it just went over her head or it went through one ear and out the other. So, 
I say, let me see, if I could think of one thing my husband complained about. Mine will be, why are you so spiritual? Why everything got to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? Why everything got to be scripture, scripture, scripture? So I did start revamping. I said, okay, take the pastor hat off. Okay. And don't be like, when I be doing counseling that I'm analyzing a situation. So basically I have to learn how to take off my hat uh, when we're communicating. So yeah, that was a, 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 a different shift for me. And then um, learning to uh, hear him out. Cause I'm the type of person I fill in the blank if you say, okay, so I went to the store and uh, what you got some tuna, tuna uh, sandwich. Um, I'm just, I'm, I've been to finish the sentence, you know, cause they be like, they, they tend to go around the corner and y'all know y'all can't take me around the corner, drop me off at the bus stop and leave me there and don't come pick me up. Cause I'm gonna be a little antsy. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer. I think I don't know, girlfriend said, can you justify saying that you And I'm see typing the questions in the chat box so Fran can see the questions. <gasps> no. Oh, your answer. Is this your answer you saying, no, Ali? No, I'm typing the questions in the chat box so Fran can see the questions because she doesn't have her book. Got you, baby. Got you. All right, thank you. That's good. She's good. She a good helper. See what I'm saying? So number three, go ahead and raise, I mean, she raised her hand. Go ahead, Liz. I think for me, it's like, I tend to be like when he's like, you need to stop, just sit back and breathe and just relax. You don't have to do everything. Just let me help you. Like you don't like just breathe and sit and relax and let me help you too. You can't do everything by yourself. It's, it's a work in progress. I have to admit like, it's okay to yes, ask for help. Liz, I like that. That's the same for me because, you know, as women, we think we're super women and we think we can do it all and put everything. In. And I think the one thing we got to do is let him help. Let him um, do things that, you know, and I have found out that some things that he does are easier and my husband works smarter, not harder <laughs> by default. And sometimes he'll just watch me because I insist, you know, like I can do it, but he'll just watch me. And then later on, he says, honey, you should have just done it like this. And I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> So I like that, Liz. That is for sure, for sure, for sure that, you know, sometimes we got to just say, you know what, I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it. Because sometimes their way is easier because God made them different. God made them to be, um, God made them to be proactive and reactive and you know, they're doers. They do things with their hands. They do things, you know, they're more action than us women. We're more talkative and visual. So I totally agree with that. Okay. Amen. All right. We're going to get out of class early tonight. I see that. This is the last question. Uh, it says, in session three, it says, we spoke of venting to wise counsel. Can you justify, Lee, say that you seek wise counsel or that you vent to those who mean you no good when you are upset? I'm not saying some moms, sisters, friends, cousins, and etc. don't give wise counsel. But I, if I if they don't, that's not who you should run to. Uh, 
I used to. I, I, I'll admit that I used to. I used to because I was all up in my flesh. I was all up in, you know, my emotions and the way I feel and my my pain, my my emotions, my feelings, my me, me, me. But after I got to know the Lord and after I got to know, you know, godly women, um, I've learned to have more self-control, you know, that's one of the fruits of the spirit. And, and I think the fruit that the having, having self-control, um, is like a muscle. You got to constantly, um, exercise that self-control. You got to know when to speak. You got to know when to just, you know, you got to know who to go to, um, when you seek counsel, you got to know how to, and, 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 and certain people, you know, they, they allow you to be you, you know, you don't have to watch what you say, or you can just come to them and, and just, just come naked, just come as you are. And, and I think having a Nathan like that in your life is truly a blessing because once you have self-control with somebody a godly counsel, they won't lead you astray. They can always speak into your life. They can always pray with you and they can always give you advice from a different perspective, like outside the box. And most of the time it's just, you know, something small. It's, it's nothing major. It's just, you know, you just kind of overreacting because God is teaching you. He's, he's definitely teaching you. It's just like when a, when a child falls and, you know, the parent has to come over and help them back up and, you know, put their hands back on the furniture or put their hands back on, you know, to stabilize them. And that's Holy Spirit. And, and that, that, and God expects us, he knows we're going to fall. He knows we're going to fall short. And, and he knew that the body of Christ was going to be there for, for, you know, we have to be there for one another because we need each other. And isolation is one of the enemy's tactics, thinking we got to do this on our own. We got to, we got to, you know, be all up in our own head to try and figure it out. And I think that's one of the major tricks of the enemy when he gets us to think that we got to figure this all out on our own. And then we turn to people ungodly people ungodly counsel and our flesh starts leading us to the wrong people the wrong people to vent to the wrong people to seek emotional support from and you know i think it's dangerous once you start heading into those those waters of ungodly counsel and when you're led by your flesh to make you feel better All right, Liz. I'll go. I mean, I'll for go. me, that's the thing they have. Like, <clears throat> but there was a lesson in that too from them. Like, okay, because they can actually make things, make, made, made our relationship worse. And then, then it actually didn't. So we learned, okay, let's find a couple that's older than us. Liz, where you go? Uh, you said you find an older couple. That's good. Okay, take a step back and pause. And like I said, those ungodly people can do more damage to a relationship and actually does good because it's like they could like not and stuff like stuff like that. It's and like I said, sometimes those good just take a step back. It works, and I think just. I'm done because I'm getting tired. <laughs> All right, I get uh, Thai tongue and I get uh, sluggish. In this, I, I mean, I, my brain gets sluggish. It's like, okay, it's about like the computer is ready to shut down. It shut it down. So that was good. Um, 
I like the fact that she said, and then you go to an older couple. And I believe that's why I have with my with my ministry team, I always telling you guys want accountability partners. And you want somebody that's going to give you godly counsel and fear God. You know, and what I mean fear God, well, they're not just going to tell you anything because if they tell you anything, the Holy Spirit should kick in and say, you know what, you was wrong for telling them that. You know, um, my, I'm always getting calls on a weekly basis, twice, three times a day. And I hear so many, so many of the Christian is like, I'm out of here. I'm tired, Apostle. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a divorce. And you know, and I and and I was like, suppose you get tired of your car, would you just get rid of it? You know, no, you'll probably work on your car if it broke down. Like if it broke down, you'll work on it, you know, and get it fixed and spend money on it, you know, get it, you know, get it together, clean it up, yeah, you know, do all that. You'll put a lot of effort into that car. But when it comes to y'all marriage, y'all tends to like, oh, I'm out of here, doses. He 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 on a whole different, or she on a whole different level now. She out there wilding out. She drinking. She drugging. She uh sleeping on the side with folks, you know, and just mean talking to me any kind of way, just disrespectful, you know. So. That's why it's important to have people in your life that you can vent to and 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 be say, hey, you know what? Revamp this thing out, even talking about leaving. You know what I'm saying? Work on you. Work on you. Take a day, two days, fast. See God's face. And then you'll be able to distinguish between God's voice and your emotion voice, which is flesh. And you and sometimes I tell folks, when you do that, when you kill that flesh and you put that up, that 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 spirit, that flesh on and yield to the Holy Spirit, I say this: be ready for the truth. Because some of us can't handle the truth. We can't handle the truth. So a lot of us, I I I will say, seek God first of all, and then, you know, second, have that accountability or that counselor, that person that can give you godly counsel. Because I have to tell women today, who's in your ear? Because that, your attitude shows who's in your ear. Oh, I, 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 I well, I talked to my friend, she's single uh, and, and, and she never been married. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Because they go, a lot of times, yeah, this is why I say, you have, when I'm shaking my head, you have to be careful because a lot of times you get, you spilling all your venom or you giving bad mouth and your spouse and everything. That friend that's been your friend, guess what? Then I already sided with you. And like, girl, if I was you, I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put up with all that mess. I'm telling you. You deserve better. I, I will leave. I pack my bag. I'm gone. You know, I, I wouldn't put up with all that. But see, that's why we, we said, why do you think the divorces now in the church is high? 50%. That's pretty high. And compared to non-believers and to, you know, the atheists. I, I said atheists. But yeah, compared to theirs, their rating is lower than the church. And then you say that you love the Lord. Yeah, I love the Lord. You you say you forgave the person. Yeah, I forgave him, but I ain't gotta I ain't gotta be with him. I ain't gotta talk to him. I ain't gotta be around him. That sounds so worldly. If I I always say if God had the same mindset or attitude that we have when it comes to our spouses, and just think if God was in the room. How would you act then? You heard what Fran said. She said, me, 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 my, my, my. All that was all about her. I, and I always tell them, you got that many, me, 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 I, I, it's about me, me, me. That's a selfish, 
spirit and you know they first cousins to pride okay so you gotta you know take an inventory of yourself you know what i'm saying but and, and you know as marriage is 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 like a job you know you gotta work on it and you gotta put time in it you gotta you know uh and what you what you put in is what you're gonna get out of it if you don't put nothing in it it's just like a bank you you put uh you you got a bank account and you don't put nothing in that bank then when you trying to withdraw you ain't got nothing in there to withdraw from so think about the marriage like your healing deposit you got to start depositing stuff in there so you when you when times get hard you can maybe take a withdrawal you can withdraw i'm not talking financial guys i'm this is spiritual now i'm going spiritual and this is prophetic as well this is something that you know you got to begin to deposit those spiritual things into your heavenly bank account amen and so um no i always say check yourself you know check your do inventory of yourself you know if you got a and i and i love the fact when she was because she been she stole my thing when i was talking about uh nathan that everybody should have a nathan in their life and and nathan you know uh if you remember with david he 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 told he told david listen thus says the lord he shared he, he gave it to him raw you know and, and and i always tell people don't ever come to apostle and ask me a question because i might not be your your strong cheerleader because why i say what i say is because i'm gonna tell the truth and i always say what we're gonna what shame the devil and on top of that i i like to sleep good at night i don't i i, I think about that blood can be on my hand if i told you something based off of my emotions based off of you know so it's just like you know when you belittle your spouse you know to your family members and and you know that you go around if her family members or vice versa his family member you wonder why they don't like you you know is because either that spouse bad mouth you to or vice versa and now they have took that that side of that that in you know of your spouse you know and you and you don't even have to be all what that individual could say and a lot of times i have learned an experience when people do that belittle their spouses in front of their friends and their family it's because they're trying to get all eyes off of them because they're doing something that they don't want to get caught up in. They don't want people to catch on to the real them. So, so that's why I say, you know, if you, you know, have a friend that you can go to and can be honest with you and tell you the truth, I mean, to be open with you and not afraid to tell you, you know what, you in your feelings, you know, what would god, what would god do in that situation you know do you think that's right what you said and done you know and when i hear a lot of people be like you know i just couldn't deal with them no more i just put them out well was that god telling you to put them out or was that you your flesh telling you to put them out so what i'm saying is y'all gonna go through some hardship you know and when it's a sickness type of thing, such as they are on, uh, they are drinking drugs or whatever, got, you know, heavy into pornography, whatever the case may be, you got to think about that is a sickness, okay? And you're gonna have to ask God to give you some patience and some wisdom for real to how to get through and pray and how to get through that, okay? Uh, any questions before oh, we almost do show me your friends and, sh and I'll show you. Oh, I like that. She said, show me your friends and I show you my friends. And that's good um, because you want you guys want to both know each other's friends and y'all want to have neutral friends. If you have a friend that your spouse and you guys don't know of and y'all don't communicate you don't talk 
to you know what i'm saying that's not good that's not good either especially of the opposite sex if you know where i'm going with it you know because a lot of times and it, it could be on your jobs it can be you know wherever and you end up confining to an individual that's not your wife and it's the opposite sex that's a setup and that's a dead trap a, a trap that you will fall in yes yeah, right it's easy to fall into uh an adultery it's easy because first of all it's thought off innocent and just emotional uh adultery that is you know you might say you might not be innocent you were just talking and venting and talking about your spouse to this individual and that individual just don't know she, he or she could have been on an assignment it is you know what I'm on assignment to snatch your soul and you you got caught up and you get caught up it's so easy so that's why i like when joseph um he went to Potiphar's wife uh and she she was trying to lay with him and he he uh she snatched his coat and he let that coat go and he was out of there and that's sometimes what you have to do you have to run because it's not worth losing your soul for a one night stand it's not worth losing your soul for being in an outside relationship with somebody what you say it can get sexual transmission oh we call it std that's good so yes yeah, sexual transmitted demons yes you can that's good she brought that up you know you can get std we ain't talking like a venereal disease she's talking about sexual transmitted uh demons when you you know uh go outside your marriage and say for instance you say love the lord on fire for the lord and then you end up sleeping with another person outside your marriage then that's what she was talking about the sexual transmitted demons so everything that because think about this that's good you brought that out so think about this women you are incubator right so when that so just think like you the bank. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna say you the bank. And so they make that deposit into you those demons, sex transmitted disease or transfer. So every prior individual that in uh that that man slept with, say he slept with a slept with a woman that was a uh, uh, a lesbian, or he slept with a, a woman that was uh, on drugs. Or he slept with a woman that was, um, you know, I'm just using that as, as, as uh, 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 was into pornography. I'm, and so now, guess what? All these tra uh, sexual transit, uh, transmitted uh, demons, or now here you is over here battling with some things, having crazy nightmares, having sex dreams, being aroused by you know who incubus succubus you know also getting the urge all of a sudden out of the oh i just feel like i want to get up have a little drink i just i just think i need to have a little drink to wind down my day you know to wind down my day you know so that right there you know what i'm saying didn't them that's what she was saying them door the door is now wide open so everything and anything goes so now here it is, you done, you were saved, Holy Ghost feel, speaking in tongues, love the Lord, on fire for the Lord. And now you went outside that marriage and end up getting called up. And now you got seven evil demons that's there to take you out mentally, physically, emotionally. And next thing we know, the wages of sin is death that's what the enemy tactic is to kill steal and destroy okay so it's never too late to repent it's never too late to come to the end of yourself because look life is too short to play games he always tell them you either in or you out there's never ever a gray area in christ you can't keep playing russian roulette with a loaded gun all right, y'all let me go because y'all know I get to going on and on. So y'all stop putting these questions in the box and stuff. Okay.
<laughs> I'm just messing with you. Love it, love it. All right. And what else? Any oh, so the last question. I was looking to see anybody else had any questions on social media. Okay, so the last question it said, um, the purpose to action is to choose one of the questions above and purpose in your heart to wholeheartedly put forth effort to work on that thing. Don't get down on yourself if you mess up. Acknowledge it and try again the next time, but purpose in your heart to keep going. So that was just, it's telling you, you know, if you want to choose one of the questions above that we talked about, and then it said, and purpose in your heart to wholeheartedly put forth an effort to work on that thing. So you got to make a decision today. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm in this marriage to win and I'm going to be open to learning more how to be what God created in me to be as a wife. Okay. Uh, so that's just something you guys would do on your leisure time as homework. Apply that to your marriage. All right. Apply it. Apply it. Just like the word. Work the word and the word. I say work the word and you will succeed in your marriage. So working the word is like using what you're learning and the and using the scriptures, applying the scripture to your life amen any other questions before we end any other questions or anything anyone want to share i'm looking on the no more questions you was awfully quiet all right brother robbins i'm telling you 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 learning this stuff like now you're gonna be like look my apostle my mentor is i already say look this is this is right here if you don't meet these uh now just <laughs> if you don't meet these qualifications I, I don't have to settle. I don't have to settle. Mm -mm, nope. I'm looking for that good thing. I'm looking for good things so I can attain favor with the Lord. Amen. And I want to look. And you want a God fearing woman. You want a woman that's that's gonna love you unconditionally, pass your flaws like she said. Even if he don't wipe off the sink when he brushes teeth, she. I just go in there and just do it myself. I am learning that a lot of times. I just pick up Mr. McCoy's shoes or whatever and put them in, put them wherever, you know, because hey, you know, ain't no use of getting upset. Ain't no use of getting mad about it. Okay. So just go ahead and do it. Okay. And say, Lord, I'm serving you. I'm serving you, Lord. I'm doing this in love. Give me grace to love beyond the flaws, beyond the shortcoming or what he may not be doing, okay? Gotcha. Any other questions? Amen. Oh, man of God, thank you. Amen. Amen. And I always tell them, I tell y'all, don't settle. My single people, they, they mean, look, apostle, as soon as I, I'm telling you, when I find... Uh, when he finds me, I'm going to bring him over there. No, don't, don't bring him over here because I don't need to be discerning. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to be discerning because y'all go through premarital counseling. That's where y'all really going to learn. Is, is, this, is this the one? Is this the one? And I remember uh, one person, I did premarital counseling, and she was like, man, I mean, you the, the questionnaire, the the booklet you had, it was thorough and everything, but I just now, since I don't been married and now I'm divorced, I, I think I need to uh, help add a few stuff to, you know, to your curriculum. I said, absolutely. I'm open, you know, because when they come in and this is what happened, I was like, questions you ask, like if you both got homes, Y'all going to have to come to a conclusion uh, or to make a decision. Okay, we're going to sell the one house and we're going to upgrade or we're going to get rid of the house and get a new house. All these type of conversations, things need to be on the table. Conversation needs to be asked, okay? But anyway, make a long story short, that marriage ended up going downhill. And I'm telling you, all the questions I was asking, 
it was like he was on point with the questions and i was like but if we was giving out an Oscar award, he would he would have won because he was so smooth. He was so good, and and that's why and that's why I say this that your discernment has to be in tune. If your discernment is off course because you didn't, you know, oh, you infatuated with this individual and you you can't you got blinders on and everything, and you be set up, you be set up to get. Oops, hit upside your head. All right, friend, come on, pray us out. Do we got any other questions? If not, we're going to go ahead and close out. Don't forget Thursday, we got our books. Uh, uh, I mean, we're still in our um, book on devil, demons, and deliverance with Marilyn Hickey. Um, I think we're on chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken. So chapter 10, we're going to be talking about the new age and the ancient lies okay that's gonna be good because we uh the video already is uh on point where you actually hear informal psychic readers and think you know they're gonna share their uh experience and everything from getting uh getting caught up in the new age okay and like i said they just call it new age but that thing been around for ancient like i said it's an ancient life Okay. All right, friend. Can you mind praying us out, sweetie? And y'all don't have any questions. I'm ready to. I'm ready to go to bed. You know, I'm an old lady. Amen. 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 We're 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 just sitting in the car because we have a um, signal now. So that's just the vehicle going off. Father, we just thank you, Father, for this time. We thank you, God, for th this lesson in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that um, that you are teaching us, God, that you, by, by your word and by your spirit, God, that we are learning, Father God, to be citizens of your kingdom. Father God, to have a kingdom marriage in Jesus' name. Father God, to give ourselves sacrificially, to love each other, Father God, to take out the speck in our own eye, Father God, before we look, Father God, at our spouse through eyes of the world, through eyes of, of uncleanness, Father God. Father God, we ask that you remove, Father God, the veil from our eyes, that you clean our eyes and give us spiritual eyes, Father, and ears to hear, Father God, to hear our spouse and from a new perspective, from a, from a different perspective in Jesus' name. Father God, give us a heart and give us eyes. Give us eyes to see in a heart, Father God, a new heart for our, hus for our husband and our spouse in Jesus' name. We lift up, Father God, those that are single, God. Father God, that you would train them in spirit and in truth, God. That you would you, that you would reveal, Father God, your heart to them. And Father God, they give and surrender their hearts to you, God. That when you clean them up in Jesus' name, God, they Amen. Amen. So her signal went out. Father, we just thank you. We bless you on tonight, oh God. We thank you even now, the Lord, that we continue, God, keeping your word closer to our hearts, oh God. As we continue, Lord, being used for your good and your glory, oh God, I pray that even these marriage begin to uh, represent what the church looks like, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Oh, well, she's going to connect. And we thank you, oh God, even now, Father that you will bless each household. Go ahead, friend. Amen. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We bless this time, Father God. We bless you in Jesus' name, God. Father God, we continue, God, to speak, Father God, prophetically into these marriages that we speak prophetically, Father God, to every 
individual in his name, God. The, the word, Father God, will go forth. This lesson, Father God, will hit, Father God, on good ground in Jesus' name. That the seed, Father God, will take root, God. Father God, will take root, and Father God, the watering of the word in Jesus' name, God. That as we water the seed, Father God, that we will blossom and we will, Father God, produce the fruits of the Spirit in Jesus' name, God. That we will have, Father God, long suffering. We will have what is good, what is what is righteous, God. That we will concentrate. Thank you, Lord. Ain't nobody mad but the dirt. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I, I but it ain't not, nobody mad but the dirt. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, Jesus, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, in Jesus' name, I hear you, God, I hear you, let these marriages blossom in Jesus' name, they will blossom and take root, God, in Jesus' name, we fan the flames, God, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, fire God in Jesus name don't let the fire go out God flame the fire fire in Jesus name flame their hearts God in Jesus name that our voices Father God will be louder than the enemies in Jesus name God that we will not be silent we will not be muzzled our voices will not go dim in Jesus name we give you the praise the honor and the glory God in Jesus name God Father God we worship you God and speak and in truth and let it be so god we thank you we thank you we thank you god it is so in jesus name it will prevail god Father God, that we will break through in Jesus' name. It is true, God. It is true in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Ooh. <laughs> Amen. All right, guys, we're going to go on that too. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Guess what? When praises go up, miracles got to chase you down. And guess what? It's coming to your doorstep. It's coming into your home. Amen. God is going to restore these marriages better than ever. Guess what? You're going to have a brand new husband, the one you're married to. He's going to be a brand new husband in your and God's lenses in his eyesight. Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged until we meet again. Love you. Thank you all for joining us. Peace. Oh, that's peace. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Robinson. The recording has stopped.